Sure. Thank you, Joe. And uh, it's great to see everybody here today. Thanks for joining us on a Saturday afternoon. So um, UNAC is part of the Sanctions Kill Coalition, which formed at the end of 2019. And for our first delegation, we went to Nicaragua for about 10 days uh, for this delegation of 13 people. And we were based in Managua, but we traveled from there to other parts of the country. And uh, we wanted to really see what, you know, what a country looks like early on in the time of uh, being you know, targeted by economic warfare and what work they've been doing to try to protect themselves from the impacts of this economic war. And so um, we started with a few days of lectures to learn about the Sandinista revolution, their work to create food sovereignty as this was actually done in tandem with the friends of the ATC. The ATC is the rural workers movement uh, which has been both the Sandinista Front and the ATC are key players in the revolution uh, of 1979, which was then, of course, followed by the Contra War under Reagan in the 80s. And then uh, from 1990 to 2006, the neoliberal period where they uh, had elected presidents who were neoliberal. And then in 2006, Danielle Ortega uh, became president and has remained so and is facing a reelection in November of this year. Um, so we uh, traveled to the, uh, we split up, half of us went into the mountain communities to learn about their farming of cocoa and bananas and coffee. And uh, the other half went to um, more of the central part of the country um, where they're growing dragon fruit and um, things like that. And so we got to stay with people in the community and learn, you know, how they were organizing because Nicaragua's economy is 80% small, you know, cooperative, small businesses, independent businesses. Uh, they've been working on food sovereignty for 25 years and 90% of the food they produce is now um, produced locally and they're exporting food as well. So this, you know, they, Early on, they linked food sovereignty to their independence, um, you know, saying that they needed to be able to feed themselves to wage these struggles. And then from there, we went to the uh, Caribbean coast. About 47% of the country is the autonomous region. And this is where uh, mainly indigenous and Afro-Nicaraguan communities live. And they have, uh, through a period of 10 years of negotiation, have come to agreements where those entities that wanted to have title of their land were given the title. They have their own governance structure and systems that interact with the Nicaraguan government, but they have this autonomy. They have a whole series of universities connected to these. They're doing a lot of work um, to you know, study the uh, kind of ancestral knowledge that they have in the country and record that. Um, but they also do a lot of work of linking that with you know, current science and finding best practices. So just really interesting. They also have worked uh, since the election of Daniel Ortega to electrify the country and get water to the communities. So about, I think it's more than 95% of the country has access now to electricity. The vast majority of that, more than 75% is renewable. They have a lot of geothermal because it's a country of uh, volcanoes. Um, so, and they've been improving their roads over the last few years. So they now have um, brand new highways linking much of the country so that travel time is much shorter than it used to be. They're very proud of that. Um, it allows them to get their goods to the various markets. So they just put a tremendous amount of it, uh, investment into infrastructure as well as education is a very high priority, empowerment of youth and women. They have a lot of structure in place uh, to build youth leaders, women leaders. They have requirements in their constitution about making sure that they have uh, women in power and political positions, for instance, for the executive office, uh, there has to, one of the, you know, president or vice president, one of them needs to be a woman. Um, so that's, you know, it's just a very much a part of, of their fabric. So it was great for us to see that. And in terms of the sanctions, uh, it is already impacting their ability to get foreign aid and to get investment into the country. There's still a lot more work that they would like to do. And, um, and so, you know, the U.S. through the NECA Act is already you know, inhibiting their ability to get capital investment, which is typical early on. It's what we saw in Venezuela after the 
Obama administration declared Venezuela a national security threat, there was tremendous capital flight, which hurt a lot of their necessary industries. And so, um, so that's what we're seeing there. And we look forward to continuing to work with the people in Nicaragua, the groups that we connected with, and in fact, um, have some discussion of ways that we can provide support to them, particularly for the uh, areas on the coast that have really been devastated by the hurricanes last year, um, Eta and Iota, which came two weeks apart, category four and five hurricanes. And, um, you know, they, they were able to evacuate everybody. They didn't lose any, you know, nobody died in those, but they had a lot of destruction to their cattle that were killed, uh, to the their um, lands where they produce their food. So they're still not able to grow food there yet. So, um, so we look forward to working with them, hopefully on that. And I'll stop there. But uh, please do check out Sanctions Kill, sanctionskill.org um, for the Sanctions Kill Coalition. A lot of great information there on that site. Thank you, Joe.